Hi everyone, it's Danny. Okay, so today we will discuss about phalaenopsisauri kits. One of my viewers suggested I do a video in which I discuss about the color, shape, and pattern variations with phalaenopsisauri kits. And I thought it was a great idea for those of you who are crazy about phalaenopsisauri kits or for those of you who just want to know what else is there. Now the Phalaenopsisauri kits are one of the most diverse groups of orchids actually and you can find practically any pattern, any shape and uh, any color but I'll go through the most commonly found orchids. Let's start with flower size. You can have Phalaenopsis orchids which have very very tiny flowers. This is usually the case with mini Phalaenopsis orchids, but some other orchids which are bigger can have really tiny flowers. Most of them though are mini Phalaenopsis. Then you have the medium-sized flowers. These are bigger than the mini Phalaenopsis flowers. Usually the orchid is bigger as well, but you can also find tinier orchids which produce bigger flowers, medium-sized like this. And then of course you have the big flowered Phalaenopsis orchids. This is one example, but I actually have Phalaenopsis orchids which are even bigger than this. And I've seen in the shops huge, huge blooms on Phalaenopsis orchids. Okay, now let's talk about the colors of the flowers. Now, usually the lip of an orchid is different from its petals. Whether it has a different color or a different shape or a different pattern, usually it is different than the other petals. There are some orchids though who have an exact same color and pattern on the lip as well. And this is the case with this orchid. But there are those orchids who have a totally different color on the lip, which creates a contrast with the petals. Those, I think, are my favorite. Sometimes the lip is lighter in color than the other petals, but usually the lip is different from the other petals. Okay, so now let's talk about the different color variations. First of all, you have your solid color. This means that all the petals have the same color and they don't have a pattern on them. Whether it's white or purple or yellow or any other different color, these types of orchids do not have any patterns or other colors on them. The lip might be different, but the other petals usually have one single color. Then you have the spotted orchids. These orchids have an array of spots differing in size on a solid color. Usually the spots are reddish in color or purple and the background can be pink, but you can also have other color variations. Now the spots can be small or big, they can be in great numbers or just a few on the orchid. There are so, so many spotted orchids out there, you just need to find them. Then we have a distinct spotted orchid and this is the harlequin orchid. Now the spots are usually purple, but the background is completely white, giving it the harlequin type of look. Now the spots can vary in size, they can be quite large or quite tiny, and you can find the spots arranged differently from plant to plant. Then we have those Phalaenopsis orchids which have veins, usually the veins are a contrasting color to the solid color from the back. The most common ones are pink with purple veins, but you can also find white and purple veins, which are really, really pretty. Some Phalaenopsis orchids have streaks of color or smudges, and I'm not sure how to call them, but there are colors on their petals which do not follow any pattern. It looks like a painting. Those are really, really pretty as well, and they can come in various colors and shapes as well. Some orchids don't have dots on their petals, but they have little tiny lines, which are really, really pretty. And this is the case with the Phalaenopsis tetraspis orchid. This is a species, and there aren't many other hybrids which have lines on their petals, but it is possible for a hybrid of the tetraspis to have lines on its petals. And of course, you can have Phalaenopsis orchids which combine these patterns. You can have Phalaenopsis which has smudges, lines and dots all together. So the patterns are infinite and the more people hybridize them, the more colors and patterns we will have. Now regarding the shape of the flower, you can have your usual Phalaenopsis moth orchid which has rounded petals, it's pretty elegant altogether. But you can also have Phalaenopsis with star-shaped petals. These are pointier and they're not so elongated, they're pretty much symmetrical and this gives it the star shape effect. Now there is a special category of Phalaenopsis orchids which are peloric orchids. Now they suffered a mutation of the lip and petals, so you can have various mutations. The most common ones refer to the lip transformation 
transforming into petals. And sometimes you can find Phalaenopsis orchids which seem to not open completely. But it's not a cultural thing, it's just a Peloric orchid. I have also seen orchids that have kind of fringy petals to them. They look like a veil. So practically, you can find any type of mutation on a Phalaenopsis orchid. And also, some petals differ from one another. Now, a new trend in the last few years is the big lip Phalaenopsis orchid. And this is again a mutation, but it is a selected mutation. The lip of this orchid is as big as its petals in some cases, but sometimes it has a very, very beautiful and classy shape to them. As you can see in this picture, it really looks unique, but there are other variations out there as well. If you search for big lip Phalaenopsis on the internet, search for images, you will see what I mean. Okay, let's move on to fragrance. Your usual Phalaenopsis hybrids do not possess a fragrance, unfortunately, but there are a few hybrids which are fragrant, and one of them is the famous Leodoro Sweet Memory, which smells absolutely heavenly, citrusy and sweet and indescribable. But if you see this orchid, I would suggest you totally get it. Some other species of Phalaenopsis orchids that are fragrant are the Violacea and the Bellina, and of course they're hybrids. These orchids do not produce multiple blooms, and they do not produce big blooms either. But I think they're absolutely gorgeous, and I think they smell amazing. Now, there is a certain type of Phalaenopsis orchid which I do not like, unfortunately, and this is the artificially colored Phalaenopsis. Usually they come in blue colors, but I've seen uh, violets, deep purples, greens sometimes, and I don't think this is okay because this is actually a white orchid and somebody can be fooled into thinking that they're buying a blue orchid and since the next blooms will be white, the person can be quite sad about this. But if you like the looks and if you don't mind that the next blooms will be white, then why not? But I believe that Phalaenopsis are just so beautiful and different that you really don't need to artificially color them. The most common natural colors you will find on a Phalaenopsis orchid is purple, pink, white, yellow, deep purples which seem black but they're not really black, and also red oranges. Blue Phalaenopsis orchids are really, really hard to find and they're not really blue, they're kind of deep purple. Also, pure black Phalaenopsis orchids are inexistent. Alrighty, so this was the discussion of the various types and patterns of Phalaenopsis orchids. I'm sure I missed a few and I'm sure there will be hybrids which are different from the ones we know now. It's just a journey and I think they're wonderful, so if you're crazy about Phalaenopsis orchids, just go to the store and I'm pretty sure you will find at least 10 of these patterns that I mentioned. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to leave me questions or suggestions, do so in a comment below and I'll get back to you. And thank you for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!